Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be doing a very fun reading vlog. This is one that I have been kind of sitting on and wanting to do for a while now, but it is spooky season, which means it is time. This video was inspired by Cassidy's Barbie vlog. So if you guys haven't seen that, go check that out. But we are going to be using a spinner wheel. Yes, a spinner wheel because I can't stop. And on this spinner wheel, there are a bunch of popular horror movies. And what I'm going to be doing is spinning this wheel, getting a horror movie, and then having to find a book that matches the vibes or reminds me of or has something to do with the horror movie that was chosen. I'm going to be trying to watch the movies that I spin, but I don't know if I'll get to all of them. So I am going to be give, using this as an excuse to watch some scary movies and just enjoy some Halloween content before the end of the month month, I just feel like I haven't really gotten fully into spooky season yet. And I need to do that. I need to embrace the Halloween and the creep and the horror. And that's what we're going to be doing in this vlog. Not every book necessarily is going to be a horror book. I imagine a decent amount of them will, but not necessarily all of them. It doesn't have to be horror. It just has to fit the vibes. So I have already done a spin because I didn't know when I was going to get to do this intro. So I wanted to go ahead and have a book ready to go. So I will show you guys what I got out of that spin. And it ended up giving me The Conjuring. The Conjuring is a movie that I have not seen in a really long time. It's by the makers of Paranormal Activity. And from what I remember, it is about some paranormal investigators that go into a haunted house and find out that it is infested by demons. And so I think this was actually based off of a quote unquote true story. And I haven't seen it in forever. I remember it scaring me when I watched it originally, but that's been years ago. So I'm excited to watch it again. I don't know what I'm going to be reading yet for this one though. I know I said I spent early so I could figure out what I was going to be reading, but I just, I have so many options. I could go with Paranormal Activity, which I wanted to read episode 13 for, but I can't get the audiobook for that one. So not going to do that. I could do Hell House, which is by the same author that did I Am Legend. I could do Spite House for a haunted house. I could do Kill Creek for a haunted house, or I could do um, Come Closer, which is a possession story. So the world is my oyster. I did not think I would get so many different options. What I think I'm going to be going with though is Kill Creek. I'm going to go pick that up today because I don't own it and my libraries don't have it. So I need to go get that and then we will get to reading. I will watch The Conjuring and then we will spin for my next read. Okay, so really quickly, I wanted to show you guys what I got from the bookstore. I only went in for one book, which was Kill Creek, and I came out with five. So I did go in for this one because this is an option for my The Conjuring role. What I think I'm going to do is read the first chapter of this one and the first chapter of one of the other ones I bought, which is Come Closer by Sarah Gran. This one is about a group of writers that go to a house on Kill Creek and realize that the house is haunted, I believe. So this would work for the haunted house aspect of The Conjuring. And then Come Closer is about demonic possession, which I also think would fit the Conjuring vibes. So one of these two, I think I'm going to read the first chapter and decide which one I am the most interested in. And then I also picked up The Nightmare Man by J.H. Market. This one's one that David and I actually started while we were on our trip, but we didn't get very far because he has to listen on one time speed. And honestly, I was zoning out a little bit because it was just one time speed's not my thing. I, I'm a like 2.25 at minimum kind of individual. So it was a little bit harder for me to like fully pay attention because I kept zoning out with the words being as slow as they were. But this one is about an author who is the nightmare man and he's gotten that moniker because his stories are so scary. And then he realizes that his stories are being acted out as murders. So this one is interesting. And then I also decided to pick up... Um, and Eric LaRocca, I've been really wanting to try everything The Darkness Eats. I just love this copy and how it is done. I think it's really, really cool. It sounds interesting. It's about a string of disappearances in a small town. There's an insidious darkness that is wanting to devastate this New England village. And I am interested in giving this one a try. And then the last one that I picked up was one that Lexi said she had heard was scaring people crapless. And honestly, that was just something I needed in my life. And that's The Boys in the Valley by... Philip Frakowski, something like that. And this one is inspired by For Lord of the Flies, which I don't dislike. It's about an orphanage for boys in a remote Pennsylvania town. And there are 32 boys that work, learn, and worship in this area. We have Peter Barlow, who was orphaned as a child by a gruesome murder. And now he is going into adulthood and he wants a future friend's family. One stormy night, a group of men arrive at their door. One is badly wounded and has occult symbols carved into his flesh. His death releases an ancient evil that spreads like a sickness, infecting all of the children within 
in the village. And soon the boys start acting differently, others turn up dead, and Peter and those most dear to him must choose sides. So I can see the Lord of the Flies inspiration, but it doesn't sound like it's going to be a direct like pull from that. So I am really interested to read this one. So this is, this is my stack. I think it's a pretty good stack. I'm excited to read these. I am going to go read the first two chapters of these and decide which one I am going to read for my first book. And then I'm also going to probably see where I can find The Conjuring and we're gonna watch that tonight. Hey guys, so I wanted to update you really quickly because I was trying to decide what book I was going to read inspired by The Conjuring last night. And after looking into the movie a little bit more and kind of remembering more about what it was about, I decided that Come Closer by Sarah Grand was going to be the most like accurate and the closest to The Conjuring movie. So if you guys have no idea what The Conjuring is about, it's about a demonologist and his wife who is a medium and they go in and kind of investigate demon activity and then involve the church in order to exercise the demons. So it's not really a haunted house. It's more like a demonic possession type thing. So Come Closer by Sarah Grand is about demonic possession. So I felt like this one was going to be a little bit better of a pick as far as closer to the movie than Kill Creek was. I am about halfway through this. It reads super, super fast. And it's about a woman who starts acting erratically and she doesn't really know what's going on with her, but she does have a book delivered to her by mistake that has a quiz in the front that says, are you possessed by a demon? And it gives you different things. And if you score a certain amount, then yes, you're probably possessed by a demon and you need to do something about it. And we're following her like progression as she's being taken more over by this demon. This book was, it's not what I expected. It's very stream of conscious, which I did not expect going in. A lot of times your demonic possession stories are a lot more like twisting heads and creepy bumps in the night and things like that. This is much more like what's going on inside her head and how she's like reacting to all of these things and trying to make light of or give explanation to some of her more erratic behavior. And it's just her thought process as she goes along. There's not really like we have her husband that's another character, but for the most part, it's just her. And I think that so far this book is doing exactly what it set out to do. It's telling the exact story that it meant to tell in the way that it meant to tell it. I'm not sure that I'm a huge fan of this more stream of conscious writing style. It's... <sighs> I don't know, it's it's doing, like I said, its job, but I guess it's just not really giving me quite the tension that I was hoping for. This doesn't really seem like a horror book to me right now, or a horror novella. It's just more, I'm reading about this woman's life as she descends into madness kind of thing, but also it there just doesn't feel like there's any stakes, I guess. But at the same time, because it is setting out, it is doing what it set out to do, and it is so bingeable, I'm also finding that I don't wanna put it down too. So it's kind of one of those situations situations where I'm a little bit bored, but I'm also flying through it. And I don't love the writing style, but it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. So I'm kind of on the fence of how I feel about it right now. But overall, I am enjoying it. I should easily be able to finish it tonight because I have less than half of it left. It's like 150 pages and I'm on page 81. So should very easily be able to finish this tonight. And I will let you guys know what I think. But for now, I actually think that I am going to go watch The Conjuring and we're going to see how I feel about the movie now because it's probably been 10 years since I watched it and how closely or how good of a pick was come closer to it being inspired by the movie. So yeah, I think that that's everything that I have for you guys right now. I'm gonna go watch the movie. I will check in with you guys when I'm done with this because like I said, I don't think it's going to take me more than an hour probably to finish it, an hour or so to watch the movie and then we'll chat. So I did manage to find it on HBO Max. I have not seen this movie honestly since it came out in like 2013, which wow was 10 years ago. That is insane. I did not realize this came out 10 years ago. But we prefer to be known simply as Ed and Lorraine. Okay, so I have finished The Conjuring and I have also finished Come Closer by Sarah Grant. I guess first let's talk about The Conjuring. I liked this movie. I think that all of that like franchise, the movies are done really, really well. I won't say that it really scared me. I for some reason remembered it very, very differently than actually watching it back. I don't know if maybe I was thinking of a different movie, but it definitely had some creepy moments. Overall though, I don't think that it truly scared me. There was some good tension. There were some good like build up moments, but I feel like it did take a while to get to that 
point where we were really seeing some more creepy stuff. I think I'm gonna give it like a seven out of 10. It was good, but it definitely wasn't like a favorite horror movie. However, I do think that this was a good choice in comparison to the movie because the movie is all about demonic possession and demonic entities like latching onto this family. And this one is all about possession of a woman. This book, I think I'm gonna give a three star. I hyped it up a lot more in my head from people talking about it and loving it, but I just think that the writing style, that stream of conscious kind of narrative just did not really work for me personally. It created a very repetitive narrative where we had the same conversations and the same types of things happening over and over and over again. And I know the intention was to build tension and to see that progression, but I do feel like it ended up being a little bit repetitive, especially for a book that was already as short as this one is. I think it did what it set out to do. I just don't think that it really unsettled me as much as I was hoping for it to. We always knew what was going on. We always knew how this was going to end. And because we were playing out everything within Amanda's mind, I just never felt as creeped out and the tension and the stakes weren't there in the way that I would have thought they would have been like there were stakes there and I do think that I like the way that it ended just with the repetitiveness and everything I feel like I'm being repetitive now but it just really wasn't a new favorite for me. I think it was a success as far as matching to the movie but not a new favorite book. Okay so let's do my next spin and see what my next book movie combo is going to be. All right, so that one ended up being a Nightmare on Elm Street. I think I'm going to read one of the books that I recently hauled, which is The Nightmare Man by J.H. Market, I think. It has Nightmare in the title. I am assuming that there are nightmares involved in the story. So I think I'm gonna go with that one. I have been wanting to read it for a while. Cassidy and Lexi both enjoyed it. Dad read it, liked it. So I think that that one is going to be perfect. Not sure if I'll get to watch the movie. And if I do, I don't know if I want to watch the old version or the newer version that came out in like the... 2000s-ish. I don't remember how old the newer version is, but hopefully I'll get to watch it because it's been a very long time since I've seen either version. It's like this go out right now, yeah. I wanted to, this, the topic, the topic is a uh, project we did and found and it's not real first, you know? Sure. Most of us probably don't. And uh, I brought my dad and my passport. No. It's Leona's the 80s. There was uh, Good morning, everyone. I'm having a bit of a morning because I'm running late getting out the door to work, but I am working on it. I decided to cook chicken and dumplings for dinner tonight because it is going to be a bit chilly outside and here in the South, chicken and dumplings is just what you make when it gets cold outside. So doing that, but I wanted to talk to you guys about The Nightmare Man. This is the book that I'm going to be doing for Nightmare on Elm Street. And I'm about halfway through it so far. So I wanted to talk to you guys about that really quickly while I was making my drink for this morning for work. This opens with a detective who walks into a crime scene where bodies are cocooned in corn husks and swinging from the ceiling. And he is obviously flabbergasted by that. They don't know what's going on and this is not the first crime scene. So then we flip over to Ben who is a horror writer and he has been given the moniker the Nightmare Man because his stories are so scary. And one of his stories is about the scarecrow and the scarecrow kills by encasing people in corn husks. So we know that there is something going on with this case and with Ben and things start to kind of spiral out of control and you don't really know exactly what's going on, how Ben ties into this, how he doesn't tie into it. And we're trying to figure all of that out. I did get a little bit spoiled for the twist of this book, not by intention. It, I was looking up a different trope and happened to get spoiled for it. So that was a little bit annoying, but I mean, I don't think it really hurt me in the story at all, like my enjoyment of the story. However, I think that because I already knew that and knew what I was looking for, it made that reveal, even if I hadn't known, I still think I would have felt this way, seem very lackluster, a little bit out of left field, and I didn't necessarily feel like the lead up was as nuanced as I had hoped it would be about the halfway point. I think that this book is highly entertaining. I'm liking the mix between the horror writer and the 
detective point of view. I think that some of the imagery is really, really good. I'm enjoying the intrigue and figure out how all of this stuff puts together. I do think that this is one of those books that has some really cool ideas, but is not going to be able to follow through on the execution as well as I hope. It is trying to do a lot of things. We have nightmares, we have killers, we have copycats, we have like a Sandman lore, we have insane asylums, we have a missing child and more missing children. There's a lot going on and the way that they're tying in together is just not done very seamlessly for me. It feels like we've got all of these different plot lines all over the place and instead of them being one cohesive story, we're just kind of going, oh, well this ties in here and oh, well this ties in here, but I need to see that a little bit more. So a lot of really good ideas, but I'm worried about the execution. We'll see how the ending shows shakes up. I've heard that it is wild. So I'm curious because there's nothing wild necessarily about the story so far, but I am enjoying it. I'm excited to continue reading it today. But for now, I'm running extremely late. I'm going to finish my drink and then I'm going to go. So I want to talk to you guys about The Nightmare Man. I think I'm going to end up giving this book a three star. The core idea of this, I liked a lot. I thought it was very unique. I thought it was an interesting thing to include in horror and I really, really enjoyed it. However, I think that there were just a few too many ideas thrown in with the core nightmare thought that it just did not, it wasn't super well executed. I just think there was too much going on. And this was apparent throughout the whole book, but especially when we got to the end, things got very chaotic in the second half and it just didn't feel very cohesive of a story anymore. It felt like we were kind of jumping from thing to thing to thing and while they did all go together, it just wasn't a very seamless blend of ideas. I still think I would recommend this book for somebody that is looking for a unique story. It was well written. I had a fun time with it. I just, again, think that the ideas were a little all over the place, but I liked the nightmare aspect of this and I definitely want to read more nightmare books and I also would read more from this author as well. As far as would this be a good pick to compare to a night, The Nightmare on Elm Street, based off of what I remember about The Nightmare on Elm Street, yes. I've not had a chance to watch it yet, so we'll see if I'm able to do that tonight. But based off of what I remember of it, this definitely plays into nightmares and not necessarily sleep as much, but it does involve sleep very well. And I think that at the core of it, that is what this book is about. And I think that that does play really well into the Nightmare on Elm Street storyline. So I think this was a good pick for that. In just a little bit, we will do another spin. I'm going to go eat dinner first because I think DoorDash should be here like any minute. But once I've eaten, we'll do another spin. We'll find out what my next book is going to be because you know me, I love spinning the wheel. I love seeing what I'm going to be reading next. And it just keeps me flipping those pages when I'm dying to spin the wheel again. I also don't know for sure if David will get to spin the wheel. He will be quite disappointed if he doesn't. So maybe this vlog will have to go until at least the end of the week so that he can spin the wheel because he's going to be very angry with me if I end it before that. My ring doorbell just went off, which means my food is here and I will check in with you guys later. Okay, so it is time for our next spin. I'm not really sure what I'm hoping to get. Probably not the Babadook. I don't know what I'm gonna read if I get the Babadook. But other than that, I think I have something I could read for all of them. So I guess let's just spin and see what the wheel has in store for me. It's gonna be the Babadook just because I said I didn't want that. Okay, so we got Halloween Town. Okay, so I don't mind Halloween Town. Well, let me get up here. But it's not like my first choice. I love that movie and I will rewatch that movie. However, I really, the choices that I have for Halloween Town are gonna be things that are a little bit more like sweet or spooky adjacent, not necessarily something that's like a true horror. So I definitely need to find something that is spooky adjacent, be that a middle grade horror or maybe one of the like romances that are more like witchy, cozy type vibes. I'll find something, but I'm thinking like a more cozy horror is what I need to pick or a more cozy spooky book because Halloween Town is definitely a cozy movie, not a horror movie. So I'm gonna go figure out what I'm going to read. I'll let you guys know when I decide. 
Good morning, everyone. I am headed into work, but I really quickly wanted to tell you that I did pick a book last night. I think I'm going to go with The Ravenous Dead by Darcy Coates. And the reason for this is because Halloween Town, A, it involves witches, but really more than anything, it is just cozy and a good fall Halloween movie. It's not a scary movie. And it also takes place in a very small town called Halloween Town. So I went with The Ravenous Dead. This is the sequel to The Whispering Dark by Darcy Coates. It is a series that she does. And and it is a very small town, cozy, ghost mystery kind of story. It reminds me of The Ghost Whisperer, honestly. And when I read the first book, I really didn't like it. I gave it a two star. However, I think that was more than anything because it is not what I expected going in. I was not prepared for small town vibes. I was not prepared for cozy. I was expecting it to be more like Darcy Coates' other reads. And while it is very much still very Darcy and written like Darcy Coates, it definitely leans leans into the cozy and leans into the small town tropes and I just wasn't really expecting that and by the time I wrapped my head around it I was already a little frustrated I think so I'm going to be going into the ravenous dark with a lot better expectations and I'm thinking I'm going to like it a lot more I don't know if it'll be a five star read but I'm hopeful that I will enjoy it exponentially more than the whispering dark but I know that I will hopefully enjoy it more regardless just because I have the right expectations going in this time so I'm excited to read that. I'm in the mood for something that is small town vibes and it gives me that kind of feeling. So I think this is going to work in my favor, but it's not very long. I'm going to start on the way to work and I will catch in with you guys about halfway, which hopefully will be around lunchtime. I wanted to check in with you guys because I am about halfway through The Ravenous Dead and I am enjoying this one a lot more so far. I don't know if it's because I just went in knowing a little bit more of what to expect or if it's just more polished than The Whispering Dead was, but I am enjoying it a lot more so far. The Whispering Dead, which is book one, follows a girl named Kira and she has arrived into this small town after being chased by an unknown entity and stumbles upon this priest's doorstep in a graveyard. And she bangs on his door and has absolutely no memory of really who she is or where she came from. All she has is a photo in her hand and she knows that she is running from someone. So he offers her asylum and a place to stay until she kind of gets her feet back up under her. We learn that Kira is able to see ghosts and she comes upon this case of helping a ghost figure out what their unfinished business is and be laid to rest. There's a little bit more to it than that, but that's basically the premise of the series so far of what I have read. We don't really know anything about Kira's past. We know that, again, she was chased by this unknown group of people, and we know that she can see ghosts, but that's about it. This series does have very, 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 very strong small town vibes. It's definitely a more quirky take. We've got the nosy shop owner and we've got the sexy doctor and we've got the caring priest and it does have a lot of those archetypes. I will admit that the best friend, Zoe, is just a little bit annoying. She kind of irritates me from time to time and the characters are not like my number one favorite thing about this book, but I don't know, maybe the small town vibes was just more of what I was in the mood for because it's still there in this one, but it also feels like this book is a little bit darker than the first book was, whereas the first one focused a little bit more on like setting the stage. This one is focusing more on like the spirit and the case, and I think that maybe that's part of the reason that I am enjoying it more. I'm not really sure, but so far I'm having a great time. Like I said, I am about halfway through and liking it a lot more. So I'm hopeful that it will continue along that path because I am really much so enjoying it. I will let you guys know know when I finish it probably tomorrow but I don't know we'll see I might be able to read some more of it tonight but I'm having a great time I've been working on a genre blanket for like literal years it feels like actually it's not been years I was doing a really good job with it and then I fell off the wagon in like March and here we are um way behind so I'm gonna work on this while I watch Halloween Town this was the book that inspired The Ravenous Dead by Darcy Coates and so far I really think that The Ravenous Dead has like gotten the core vibes of what I was going for for Halloween Town it's still cozy small town friendship focused while also also having a big bad but the big bad is like not like he's scary but in a Halloween town scary kind of way so I think it was a good good pick I think it was a good choice but I'm going to watch this it's not very long like an hour and a half hopefully I can make a good dent in my blanket when I'm done I'm gonna finish up the ravenous dead and then we'll come back and chat Thank you. 
Okay, so I am finished with Halloween Town. It's still a cute movie. I will say that over the years I have gotten to where it's not quite as much of a favorite as it used to be. Like it's still fun, but it definitely is much younger and cheesier than I remember it being just over the course of a couple of years. But I do still enjoy it and I would recommend it. It is small town, cozy, big bad. I've already told you guys. Halloween Town is basically just about this family who are witches, but these kids' mom don't want them to know that they're witches. And there is a place called Halloween Town where their grandmother lives and they sneak away and get sucked into that world. So it's cute. It's fun. As far as the ravenous dead goes, though, I think... I, uh, I'm trying to decide what I'm going to give this because... I think it's going to end up being a high three star. I think I really enjoyed this. I had a great time with it. It's not a favorite Darcy of mine. I definitely enjoyed the vibes. I think it is a great fall book. The characters don't hit for me quite as hard as I would want them to. Zoe, the best friend, is a little bit annoying. I mean, she's definitely like an archetype and suits that archetype perfectly, but she's a little bit aggravating. There are a couple of things that I'm just like... Yeah, I, I wish that we had a little bit more explanation to stuff, but at the same time, I really had a good time with this. So I think it's a high three star, maybe a low four. I'm not really sure, but that is leaps and bounds better than The Whispering Dead, which I gave a two star. And like I said, I don't know if it's because I went into this with better expectations. I don't know if I've just read more Darcy now and know what to expect. I'm not sure if it's because this one is a sequel and it is a little bit later for her. So maybe it was more polished because it felt like it, but it's been a little while since I read The Whispering Dead. I'm not sure, but I did have a good time with this. I thought it was fun. It was definitely a great fall read. It put me in the spirit. I kind of want to read The Twisted Dead now, which is the third book, because I think that in February the fourth book comes out. I'm not sure how long this series is, but I had a good time with it. It was fun. I would recommend it, especially, like I said, if you're looking for small town ghost cemetery type vibes this is a good one. So here in just a second, we need to spin the wheel again, because you know me, I can't go to bed without knowing what I'm going to be reading next. So we're going to spin the wheel, see what the next horror movie is going to be. And we'll go from there. I don't know what I'm going to replace Halloween Town with. I think, I don't know. I, I do want a couple on there that aren't like scary, scary. So I could go with Haunted Mansion. I'm thinking the, you know, it always feels like somebody's watching me. I have no privacy. Whoa, whoa. That Haunted Mansion with Eddie Murphy, that one. Or I could potentially do 13 Ghosts because I haven't seen that, but my patrons were recommending it to me the other day. They said it is a haunted house movie and I did want a haunted house movie on the wheel. So maybe I'll put that on there. I don't know. We'll see. But let's go switch that out and then spin the wheel, see what I'm going to be reading next. So we are down here with the wheel. Let's give it a spin and see, see what the next movie inspired book is going to be. Let me tilt you guys down. Okay. I'm scared. I don't know what I don't want. Um, I'm not sure. I still think I'm a little leery on the Babadook. But other than that, I think I'm okay with anything else on here. So let's just see what I get. Halloween? It looks like we got Halloween, which after Halloween Town, but very, very different vibes. Halloween is like the original Michael Myers slasher movie. And I don't know what kind of vibes I'm going for for this one. I could do either like stalking vibes maybe, or I, like he's obsessed with you vibes because Michael Myers is definitely obsessed with her. Or I could potentially do just like slasher. Or I could do a bunch of, a book with a bunch of sequels, but I don't think I'm going to go that route. I think I'm going to do like a slasher or he's obsessed with you stalker type vibes. So let me go see what I can find and I will check back. So I have been looking for like 15 minutes on a slasher type book that I can read. And a lot of the ones that I am interested in, I've already read. And the ones that I'm still interested in that I haven't read, they're either not at the library or they're not on Scribd. And I'm having a really hard time getting a hold of them. I wanted to do There's No Way I Die First because it's the book club pick for the Lights Out book club, but I can't get it. It's got like a six month hold on it. So what I think I'm going to do is go with Taste Like Candy by... I forget who it's by, but I'll pop a cover up up here. It is a slasher, I think, clown story. Let me look before I lie to you guys. I don't want to be like Patty and lie. Okay, so Tastes Like Candy. It's a carnival slasher book. 
So basically it's about a group of girls that go to a carnival and they're going on like a scavenger hunt and at sunrise they're going to gather in celebration of their upcoming senior year but somebody else has other plans and people start die. So could be interesting. I'm not always a huge slasher fan just mostly because I don't love it when it's just non-stop action. I do need to slow down a little bit and give me something more than just kill after kill after kill. However, I can usually get my expectations tempered for that and still have a good time with it. So that's what I'm looking for. Looking for a solid good time. I feel like a slasher does scream Halloween to me. That is the slasher movie. So I'm gonna go with that. It's not very long and it's on KU. So I should be able to get it done pretty quickly. I'm gonna read it while I'm at work tomorrow. So don't tell anybody. Probably not a good book to read while you're at work. But it's got to be better than listening to Smut while at work, right? That's what I'm going with. So I am going to go download that, read a little bit in bed, and go to sleep because your girl's got an early morning tomorrow. Will you stay propped there? I don't know. Let me turn off my heater because I am cold. There we go. Hopefully that will get rid of some of the ambient noise. It is freezing in my office today. Normally we have like two heaters going and it it stays warm enough but unfortunately today the breaker has decided that it is cranky and because i am the lower on the totem pole of the two of us i ended up having to turn off my heater so i am cold but we i mean we have another one in the office i share an office with the physician and it's fine but I'm cold. So I'm in the car with the seat warmer on and my heat trying to dethaw. But that's not why you're here. You're here to listen to me talk about books, not how cold I am. So I saw where Halloween is picked for me my next book and it ended up choosing Taste Like Candy. I don't remember the author's name, but I will leave it up here. Everyone knows what Halloween is about, but it's basically a slasher about Michael Myers, who is obsessed with Jamie Lee Curtis. I don't remember her character's name, but it's Jamie Lee Curtis. And he comes back to kill the whole town and her over and over and over again. It's not over and over and over again, but the number of sequels that they've made, it feels like over and over and over again. He was accused of killing his family, ended up in a insane asylum, and he has escaped and has come back to slash people. And basically the entire Halloween movies are just Michael Myers killing everyone while walking very slowly and very ominously with a mask on. So I had several choices for what I could do for this one, but I ended up going with a slasher because that just felt the most like Halloween to me. When I think of Halloween, I think of slasher movie. So I looked around, I was trying to find a couple of things because I don't love slashers and I feel like the ones that I was interested in, I had already read, but ended up choosing Taste Like Candy. I may have already told y'all of you this, but Taste Like Candy is about a group of teenagers and every year a couple of girls get hand selected by, I think the class president to go do a scavenger hunt, which is usually on campus to kick off their senior year. But this year, they're going to be doing it at a carnival rather than at the school grounds. We have a bunch of different main characters, or a bunch of different characters, but our main character is a violinist, and she is trying to get into this prestigious school a few states away for music, and she is just distraught because she hasn't heard back from them yet about whether or not she's accepted, but her friends are like, come on, we're going to do the scavenger hunt, we're going to have a good time, and you're not going to think about that for a little while. So they go, and people start dying, and that's about where I am right now. That was, uh, the lead up was about 35% of the book, which seems like a lot and normally in my slashers that is my number one complaint is that the slashing starts too early however there's a balance between too early and way too late because you know you're in it for the slasher like that's why you're there it's for the slashing so i wasn't expecting it to be 35 percent of the way into the book but here we are I think for me right now, I was like prepared for the slashing and I am getting very aggravated by the cheesiness of the characters. It's just one of them is like an influencer and one of them's into music and one of them is the mom of the family or of the friend group and there's a bunch of different archetypes but they are like cheese to the max. I mean, it could not get much cheesier than I feel like it is right now. And it's very common, I think, in slashers. It's just the writing's not my favorite. I don't know if the cheese is intentional or not. And that doesn't bother some people. But for me, I'm just like, there's no way, absolutely no way that we would have acted quite this bad. Like, the the themes and everything that they're talking about, yes, absolutely did that as teenagers. But the way that they're reacting to them and some of the things that they're saying, I'm just like, no one would say that. No one would say that. So it's just very... I don't know. The cheese factor. The cheese factor. But anyway, 
other than that, I think it's going to be interesting. The slashing has just about started and we've had one scene so far that was pretty gruesome. So I'm just in it to have a good time. I'm just in it to have fun because I know that slashers aren't usually my preferred horror, but that's okay. Like every once in a while, you know, step outside your comfort zone, try it again, see if you like it. And that's what I'm here for. I'm here for a good time. So I'm going to finish that. I only have like an hour and a half of it left because it is actually pretty short, like 150, 200 pages. And I read the beginning of it while I was waiting on everybody to get to work this morning. I am going to finish that um, on my way home. I'm actually going to go eat dinner with my parents tonight. I have talked them into going to my favorite restaurant, which is Hibachi, and I love it. And this particular restaurant is my absolute favorite. So I'm excited to get to eat that this afternoon. I will maybe show you guys a little clip of what it looks like. 10 out of 10 recommend teriyaki sauce is my favorite but yeah I, I need to I need to stop talking and I need to go back to reading my slasher book in my nice warm toasty car I also forgot to tell you guys that I've actually already done another spin I will show it to you here because I needed an audiobook taste like candy is on kindle unlimited it doesn't have an audiobook so I needed one to listen to on my way to and from work today so I did spin and got Amityville horror which is obviously a haunted house story about a man that moves his family into this house he starts to believe that there are ghosts and demons in this house and people start dying and there's question of like whether this was you know a real case and whether he was crazy yada 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 and I didn't want to go too on the nose because I'm pretty sure this was based off of a book and used the actual book so I decided to go with just a general haunted house story and for this one I think I'm going to be doing September house because I have the audio through the penguin random house influencer so I need to read it and I have a physical copy I've heard some really really good things. Cassidy recently enjoyed it. I've heard that it is a quirky haunted house story, but in a good way. So I am very, very interested to give this one a try. I will let you guys know more about what it's about once I've started it, but just wanted to let you know that that is what I'm going to be subbing in with Taste Like Candy on my way home. Just confiscated Ollie's toy and he is very mad at me because he wants me to throw it, but he was being very loud while I was trying to film a clip. I have two things to talk to you guys about because I finished Taste Like Candy and I'm a little way further into the September house. First, let's talk about Taste Like Candy. I think this one is going to get a two star from me. I, there were things about it that I liked and I thought were well done, but for the most part, I just don't think slashers are for me. The characters were super cheesy and just felt very inauthentic to me. While I did like the kills and the theme and it being like the carnival and all of that fun stuff, and I thought that they were well done, I never really felt on the edge of my seat. I was never like just suspense wanting to know what's gonna happen next. Where is this guy gonna be around every corner? Who's gonna be the next victim? Like I just, I was just kind of there reading it. And so I just think that that didn't create the best environment for me in a horror novel. And a lot of that I think was because the like banter between the killer and the girls was, it was ridiculous. It did not make any sense. It was like something about, um, I'm gonna get you my skinny fat queen. And I'm like, for one, that's an oxymoron. And for two, that just doesn't make any sense. And then no one even acknowledged it and just kept on going like it was this huge insult. And I'm like, what? It just it didn't make any sense. And who the killer ended up being, I, it, all of that was fine. I actually think this book did a pretty good job of setting up characters, backstories, and giving like, not, I won't say plausibility to the reason the killer was slashing everyone because it just seemed, again, a little ridiculous. But at the same time, there was backstory there. It was like fleshed out to the point where there was actually a lot more about the characters than I expected there to be. If I had thought that this book was intending to make fun of itself and intending to be this ridiculous over the top type of thing, I think that I would have enjoyed it more. But I actually got the impression that the author was intending for this to be a lot more of a true slasher. And I just... I had a hard time with that personally. So if you're somebody that likes over the top slashers and you like slashers in general, then give this one a try because I don't think that it was like horrible. It just wasn't to my taste. Ollie's like pawing at me to try to get this toy. You can have it back as soon as we're done with the clip, but you had to wait and you haven't wanted this this whole time and now you want it. Okay, then let's also talk about the September house. I have no idea how far I am into this, like 35% maybe. And this is following a woman and her husband who have always rented and they really, really want a house of their own. They want an old Victorian. When their daughter Catherine moves out, they finally find the perfect house and they go and they tour it and, 
And the real estate agent is like, I have to let you know that people have died in this house. And they're like, we don't care. I mean, it's so old. Lots of people have probably died in this house. We'd be shocked if they had it. We want it. And so they move in and they don't really think anything of things getting misplaced and moved around or cabinet doors being opened. And then September rolls around and the walls start to bleed. That's the basic concept of what I have gotten of this book so far. I will be honest, I have not found the plot yet. I, I am a little bit surprised by that. This is a book that lots of people love, 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 like highly recommended. People that normally wouldn't like quirky do seem to really enjoy this story. And I'm just trying to figure out what I'm missing. I think part of it may be the audiobook. The narrator is a very like motherly, slow, I don't know. I think she may be overdoing the slice of life for me a little bit in the narration. So I am going to flip to the physical part. But so far, it just really seems very slice of life. It's how their marriage has been and then their daughter's life and then it's life with ghosts. But it's not... Like there are things that are happening that are creepy haunted house type stuff. And I didn't expect this to be like a true horror novel. I expect this to be horror adjacent. So I did go in with those expectations. There's just not much else going on. Like I expected them to have some kind of direction, like something we're trying to achieve, whether that be getting rid of all of the ghosts in the house. I think there's going to end up being something, but we haven't quite fleshed that out yet. But I'm just waiting on what the end goal, I guess, is going to be. I think this is extremely well written. Right now it feels like a three star, but like I said, I'm only about 30-ish percent of the way through it. I am gonna flip to physical, see if that helps a little bit because I have really, really high hopes for this one and I can see why people like it. And so I'm just waiting for that moment to click for me too. So anyway, I will probably read some more of this tonight when I get home. I do have to take Ollie to the vet really quick. He's got a little spot on his back that I need them to take a quick peek at, but he's fine. And then when I get home, I'm going to read some more. But for now, let's throw this poor dog his toy. So I am a little bit further into September House by Carissa Orlando. And I don't really have a whole, whole lot more thoughts on this. We are moving a little bit more like plot wise because the husband is missing and the daughter is there trying to figure out where he went. But Catherine is one of the most obnoxious characters. Like... I don't know. I just, I'm assuming there's going to be a point as to why she is so over the top and she's 30 and she's like pitching fits like a five-year-old and screaming at people. And her mom is very like, Margaret is very even keel and low tone and trying to like make up for that and very patient. So I am assuming that that huge drastic thing is going to, it's going to matter. That is my prediction. We're going to see if I'm right. But anyway, um, I am not a whole lot further than I was when I talked to you guys before. So I'm going to go back to reading. I am kind of getting down to crunch time on finishing this book before the end of the week. And I still kind of want to watch Amityville Horror. So we're going to see what I managed to get done. But um, if this vlog goes up on Sunday as planned, you will know that I did the hustle. So I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm going to go watch um, the Hell Weekend Hangout for this weekend. I think it's like making fun drinks and they're going live. So I'll talk to you guys in a bit. Just checking in because I am now halfway or a little over halfway into the September house and I am liking this more now. I'm kind of getting like the point of the story and I think that there is an important conversation happening here done in a very unique way, which I can appreciate. I think that that is, like I said, an interesting way to talk about the thing that we are talking about. It just took a little while to get there, but again, the lead up felt appropriate. So I am enjoying that. I think it is well done. I'm curious to see how we continue on in this conversation and how it routes back into the haunted house side of things. Things are starting to spiral, not going well. So I'm going to keep reading. I think I can finish this tonight. I have about mm, that much left of it. And I'll check in probably quite a bit later as I'm getting ready for bed and have hopefully finished this book. Hi friends, so ignore the messy room behind me, but it is quite late. It is almost midnight, but I wanted to let you know that I have finished The September House by Carissa Orlando. We will close out this vlog tomorrow, but I wanted to give you my final thoughts and rating on this. I have slightly mixed feelings about it because I think that this book did exactly what it meant to do. I think that it was very well written. I think that it had a very interesting take on haunted houses and trauma and dysfunctional like relationships, I guess is a good way to put it. And I think it did all of that extremely well. I think it portrayed all of that really well. I think it was an interesting way to tell this story. The plot in and of itself was not anything just 
overly unique, but the way that it was told was, and I really appreciate it for that. I was a little bit bored in the first like 35%, no lie, there was a moment where I thought about DNFing this book, but I'm so glad that I didn't because I actually really enjoyed it once we got around the 35-40% mark. The pacing really, really picked up and I enjoyed it a lot. I do think that it helped switching from the narration to the physical copy because the narration did take on a very motherly chipper type tone that just was a little bit, I don't know, it, it fit the vibes, but it didn't fit the vibes all at the same time. I will say that if you have triggers, look this up. And I did say that it was spooky adjacent. However, I want to say that the tone was spooky adjacent, but the imagery was quite graphic. There was a lot of more gruesome scenes in here. The way that it was told kind of gives you a cavalier approach, but there were a lot of gruesome, vivid imagery in here, which again, I think was extremely well done. And I liked the way that it was told a lot. The thing that I think that I didn't love was also part of the thing that I did like about it. There were certain social, I don't want to say social issues because they weren't really societal problems, but like a personal issue and relationship type dynamics that were going on in this book that I think were really, really well done. And I think that it was a good conversation to have. However, I do wish that because it was such a big part of the story, it had played into the haunted house part in some unique way. I think that that would have really brought it home for me. Otherwise, it just felt a little bit more there to bring something to the conversation and bring something to the story rather than like fulfilling something in the story, if that makes sense. Like it was a little added extra, but it didn't feel as much of a big part of the whole story. Even though it was, I just wish it had tied in just a little bit better. And that's not a huge complaint, but just a little bit better, I would have appreciated. I think my biggest issue with this was the slice of life did last a lot longer than I wanted it to. And I think that this book probably could have been cut by at least 50, 60 pages due to all the repetitiveness. And this is something that I've heard a lot of people say about this book, but there are even the same phrases, the same scenes happening over and over and over and over again. And it is very noticeable. I don't know why that choice was made. I don't know if it was like a strong thing that she wanted to be in the book or if it just needed to be edited down a little bit more, but it was kind of distracting how repetitive the book was. Overall, I think that this is going to get a high three star for me. I quite enjoyed it. Like I said, I think it was a unique take on the haunted house story. I like the conversations that we had in here and I thought it was extremely well done. So I enjoyed this a lot. Um, the Catherine personality thing, her being a little bit dramatic, did not fully play into the story like I thought it was going to, but that was okay because she oddly grew on me a little bit as we went throughout the book. This is also an older MC, so if that's something that you are looking for, this does have that, and I think it was well done, and it is sapphic, so again, all, all good things. But yeah, I'm gonna give this a high three star. Thoroughly enjoyed it. I think it was really well done. I don't think I'm gonna get to Amityville Horror before the end of this vlog, maybe in the morning. I really wanted to, I just don't know that I'm gonna get to it. So I'm going to go to bed because like I said, it is late. Can I go take off my makeup, get in bed, and I will be back tomorrow morning when I am a little bit more awake and close out this vlog. It is the next morning. I have finished the last book. It's time to close out this vlog. I really enjoyed all of my reads this week. It was actually a really big success and was a lot of fun seeing with the wheel and matching like a horror movie to a book. Honestly, didn't want this vlog to end and I might have to do it again in the near future. Let me know if you enjoyed it and if you would want me to do this again soon. Found some books that I really enjoyed, The September House and The Ravenous Dead. It was overall a resounding success. I had a great time. So I think that that's pretty much everything. I did not get a chance to watch Amityville Horror. I really, really wanted to, but by the time I finished September House last night, it was just midnight and it wasn't, that wasn't happening. So hopefully I will get to watch it in the next couple of days. If I do, I will put it in one of the other vlogs. I am going to go deal with David's dogs because they will not shut up and stop barking. So thank you guys so much for watching as always. If you just want to let me know that you were here, leave me a, leave me a house emoji for September House. As always, links to my Patreon, Instagram, Twitter, and Goodreads are all in the description box below. Please give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe if you want to, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!